Well, good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to morning prayer on this second day of spring, September. Today is also the, we remember the martyrs of New Guinea. I'm going to use the office reading for morning prayer that pertain to the martyrs of New Guinea. But I just want to, by way of introduction, share a little bit with you about the martyrs of New Guinea. A wooden cross commemorates the death of the missionaries and others who were killed by the Japanese in New Guinea in August 1942 during World War II. The exact dates of the deaths has not been ascertained and September the 2nd was chosen for their memorial by the Synod of the Diocese of New Guinea as being close to the presumed end of the killings. The martyrs included well over 300 people including Anglicans, Roman Catholics and Lutherans. Many were from Papua New Guinea. England and Australia, many were from Papua New Guinea, England and Australia, and they were priests and lay people. One of those martyred was Father Henry Matthews, who has links with the Anglican parish of Ararat in the Diocese of Ballarat. A shrine to the martyrs of Papua New Guinea has also been set up at the Ballarat Anglican Cathedral. We remember the martyrs of New Guinea this day. Morning Prayer for Thursday begins on page 407 of the Prayer Book for Australia. And the psalm we're going to use this morning is psalm number 126, which is found on page 362 of said prayer, prayer book. Psalm 126, page 362. This is the message we've heard from Christ, that God is light in whom there is no darkness at all. Glory to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. The opening canticle, a song of God's herald. Go up to a high mountain, herald of good tidings to Zion. Lift up your voice with strength, herald of good tidings to Jerusalem. Lift up your voice, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, behold your God. See the Lord God coming with power, coming to rule with his mighty arm. He brings his reward for the people of God, the recompense for those who are saved. God will feed his flock like a shepherd and gather the lambs in his arms. He will hold them to his breast and gently lead those that are with young. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 126 on page 362. When the Lord turned again the fortunes of Zion, then were we like those restored to life. There was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. Surely the Lord has done great things for us, and therefore we rejoiced. Turn again our fortunes, O Lord, as the streams return to the dry south. Those who sow in tears shall reap with songs of joy. They that go out weeping, bearing the seed, shall come again in gladness, bringing their sheaves with them. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image, and yet more wonderfully restored us in your Son, Jesus Christ, Grant that, as he came to share our human nature, so we may be partakers in his divine glory, who was alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our New Testament reading designated for morning prayer uh, for the martyrs of New Guinea is Revelation chapter 6, verses 9 to 11. Revelation 6, verses 9 to 11. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slaughtered for the word of God and for the testimony they had given. They cried out with a loud voice, Sovereign Lord, holy and true, how long will it be before you judge and avenge our blood on the inhabitants of the earth? They were each given a white robe and told to rest a little longer until the number would be complete, both of their fellow servants and of their brothers and sisters who were soon to be killed, as they themselves have been killed. May your word live in us and bear much fruit to your glory. 
the canticle, the hymn of the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed on his name, he has given power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of a man, but of God. And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. We have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, and from his fullness have we all received, and grace upon grace. I invite you to join me in affirming our faith through the Apostles' Creed, which can be found on page 385 of the prayer book. Together we affirm, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Collect for Martyrs Almighty God, by whose grace and power your holy martyrs of New Guinea triumphed over suffering and were faithful even to death, grant that we who now remember them in thanksgiving may be so faithful in our witness to you in this world, that we may receive with them the crown of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So we pray for the world and for the church. Loving God, we give thanks this day for the martyrs of New Guinea, remembering the supreme sacrifice they made for their faith. We give thanks for their example of self-sacrifice. We remember them this day with thanksgiving. And we pray that there be an end to war and conflict, violence and hatred. We particularly continue to hold up in prayers the peoples of Afghanistan. We pray as the Taliban establishes a government that it may do so that is just and wise, one that is uh, merciful and compassionate to the peoples of Afghanistan. May there be no reprisals or vengeance taken on those who assisted the Americans and the Australians during the 20 year conflict. We especially think of women and remembering, recalling the plight of women under the Taliban regime formerly. We pray Lord that there may be tolerance and respect for women in Kabul and in other cities and regions of Afghanistan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for those who are struggling with the extended lockdown uh, throughout our diocese. Um, We particularly think of those people of southwestern suburbs of Sydney where the pandemic is ravaging communities. We pray, Lord, that people who are to date unvaccinated may 
seriously consider doing so for the good of the, their families and their neighbours. We think of those who have died of COVID-19 in recent weeks. We think of their families, those who are grieving their loss. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our parishes and communities across the diocese, we think particularly of um, some of our older parishioners and folk who uh, live alone and are feeling quite isolated and vulnerable at this time. Father, we hold them up to you in prayer. We pray that um, we pray that they may avail, them, may avail themselves of the opportunity to have a single bubble and a designated person come and sit with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our diocese and for our bishops, Peter, Sonia and Charlie. We continue to uphold in prayer the first peoples of our diocese, especially the Awabakal, Birupai, Dark and Young, Giwagal, Guringai, Kamilaroi, Waramai and Wanarua peoples. We acknowledge in our prayers elders past, present and emerging. We acknowledge that the, the, the land on which we stand always was and always will be theirs. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our governments uh, at the various tiers, uh, federal, state and local. We pray um, for Scott, our Prime Minister, and Gladys, our Premier, and their staff and support. Um, we, we pray that you may continue to guide them to lead us wisely. Uh, in Jesus' name, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our diocese this morning, we think of the clergy and people of the parishes of Gloucester, Gresford, Patterson, Maitland, Mary War, and Wallenby Valley. And we also pray for the Newcastle Anglican Schools executive and staff the Professional Standards Office and the Executive and Staff of the ASDF. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We uphold you in prayer all who are sick or suffering in body, mind or spirit. Those known to us, those known only to you. And always we pray your healing for the sick, your comfort for the dying and for all of us, your presence and peace in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord and Heavenly Father, you have brought us safely to this new day. Keep us by your mighty power, protect us from sin, guard us from every kind of danger. And in all we do this day, direct us in the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us praise the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of peace equip us with everything good so that we may do his will. And may he work in us that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever. Amen.